I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not an archaeologist, I'm an uh, information scientist, and I'm kind of really doing uh, not archaeological research, but I'm doing research about archaeology. So uh, everything that I'm, I'm talking about, it's, it's more or less kind of always a meta-level discussion about, about kind of uh, how archaeology is being done and, and what uh, you can say about it. Uh, this time, uh, I've been um, uh, kind of gathering things that uh, have been happening in, in different projects. I've been involved uh, involved in, in during the last few years, uh, and just uh, for the uh, sake of credit, uh, the uh, archaeological information in the digital society project that uh, uh, ended finally in the in the end of last year. Then I can uh, mention uh, uh, there's a bunch of publications uh, that have uh, come out of, out of that project and. And I'm kind of sort of making references uh, to them uh, during the presentation, uh, although it's not really about what I have already been written, uh, but it's more like uh, uh, thinking about things a little bit further. Then uh, th this uh, work has definitely uh, benefited of the discussions uh, in the context of the course action artwork, uh, where I have had the opportunity to discuss about archaeological practices and knowledge work uh, during the two or three uh, past years. And then it's, it's very much uh, related to the uh, forthcoming project starting uh, next month uh, about capturing paradata for documenting data creation and use for the research uh, of the future, uh, short and, and, and concise title. Um, and the question is really about, about kind of, uh, I think this uh, idea about, about kind of thinking about real time, uh, it can be really useful in, uh, when we're thinking about archaeological documentation and archaeological uh, information management, and uh, especially the, the kind of the parts of, of kind of what is need, what needs to be documented and when and what uh, implications the documentation in different phases has to so the use of the documentation uh, maybe in a, at, at a later stage. Uh, there are some fundamental questions we, we can uh, think about. Uh, kind of what is archaeological archaeological data to start with? And uh, it's obviously a lot of different things, and uh, you can use many things as archaeological data, as you can use many things as archaeological information. It's basically a similar kind of a question that what is uh, archaeological practice and archaeological related practice that we have been pondering uh, within the uh, uh, context of the cost artwork action, and there can be also many things. and. Uh, and uh, it's very difficult to kind of draw a line that where archaeological practice begins and where it ends. Uh, whether this is an archaeological practice, uh, it has certainly some sort of a relation to some practices archaeologists are involved in, but it's not necessarily quite a question about that. And the same applies to archaeological data in the sense that you can have kind of, yeah, there are kind of certain things that definitely are archaeological data, but then you can use many other things as, as kind of uh, as some sort of source material to, to do, do archaeological stuff. And uh, really kind of a, maybe a more in interesting question to, to ask could uh, be instead of kind of what is archaeological data is, is to ask that when the archaeological data is, kind of when something becomes uh, uh, data uh, in archaeology. And then another ob obvious question is, is that kind of where the archaeological data comes from and, and from a temporal perspective the question is that kind of when archaeological data is, is being made. And, uh, Thinking about the documentation of, of data and documentation of documentation, uh, this is really the crucial moment because there we would need to be there to understand kind of what's really happening when when the data is being made. And uh, there are certain concepts uh, in the title, and, and there are uh, in the audience people who have been interested in, in, in these issues in, uh, uh, for a long time. And the question is really about uh, about kind of the, the data about the making of the data. And that can be called paradata, or somebody prefer to uh, call it uh, provenance metadata. Um, although I think kind of provenance metadata, it's, even if they, in, when you look at the literature, so people may maybe talk about the same things. So uh, kind of paradata could be probably a little bit more than just uh, uh, metadata about the provenance uh, of the data. And uh, the. What is the relation to real time here in this context is really that the, uh, when we think about uh, data creation and data use, so they have uh, different temporal trajectories, and uh, they have they are, they are being done in different uh, kind of 
phases, different uh, places and, and different times when it comes to an uh, archaeological investigation. Uh, I'm kind of sort of making a reference here to, to excavation as a kind of a stereotypical, almost kind of like an archaeological investigation, but this isn't obviously a kind of a question of only excavations, but it's more like uh, also a survey, uh, desk-based study, whatever. So they, uh, they have their own temporalities, but they still uh, have temporalities. And uh, the, the thing is that kind of what happens and when, and uh, if you, uh, making it very simplistic in a sense, if you uh, start interpreting it in very early stage, so then you, then you kind of create certain kind of data, certain kind of information uh, early on. If you first capture and then you concern yourself with interpretation only later, in the site hut, in the lab, uh, maybe never, really, it's always an option, uh, then the, the data and the information that you're creating, it's going to be very different uh, from the one that if you kind of really start thinking and, and synthesizing stuff already when you are kind of digging uh, things in the field. And uh, you can draw different kinds of uh, uh, arrows here, and uh, depending on kind of what is being created and when, and when it's going to be used by uh, the same person or somebody else, uh, the, the data and, and the need for the data in the use and of the tra uh, trajectory, so they, they, are, they are very different. And, uh, and, and what is kind of really needed and, and what is there, uh, there's a big difference. And uh, really depending on, on kind of uh, how we think that uh, the data will be used and kind of for, what, for whom it is data and when, it would really require a, a focus in, in the creation, uh, kind of in the start, to that, okay, kind of now I'm thinking that this data is going to be used by, by somebody, uh, uh, let's say, sometime in the future, or this is something that I'm, I'm doing here in order to look at it later uh, today uh, in the site hut in the afternoon. Uh, there's a big difference uh, what kind of really needs to be documented. If it's later in the afternoon, I can make a rather kind of sketchy notes about stuff and that could be quite enough. Whereas uh, if it's for somebody in the very far future, so then I would uh, necessarily need to uh, somehow document uh, the the data creation in much more explicit terms. And uh, there is, uh, then, if, if I try to go back to the question of, of kind of, uh, to the real time, so what is real time, or when is real time? And uh, there you can probably kind of uh, divide this into two <coughs> different uh, ways of, of seeing the thing. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a, this is a bad dichotomy, really, but, but you can kind of think about real-time data capture or real-time interpretation, in a sense. And uh, depending on, on what is happening in real-time, or whether it's kind of a real-time, something in, in between. Uh, so so it, it really uh, uh, has an impact on, on kind of what comes out of the process. If you're real-time interpreting, so then you are probably not real-time capturing that much. If you are capturing real time, so then you aren't probably doing the interpretation that much. Uh, then to the uh, theoretical part of the, uh, of the thing, uh, I uh, ended up reading uh, uh, a couple of texts written by uh, um, a Dutch, uh, well, theoretician, I would say. Maybe someone would call him a, a philosopher. Uh, he was definitely many other things as well. Wilhelm Flusser, uh, who has made a uh, a kind of a distinction between uh, Imaginieren uh, and uh, Einbilden. Uh, and he has been interested in, in, in kind of images. So this is not directly about archaeological data. But I think uh, he makes, makes some fairly interesting remarks about uh, images uh, that have uh, kind of sounded very familiar to me when I, I thought about archaeological data. Um, his idea is, is that kind of... Uh, Traditional images, they, they are imaginieren, uh, and they are uh, kind of uh, that you interpret stuff, uh, and it's about meaning making when you paint a picture, let's say, kind of in that way. Whereas uh, technical images, uh, that's kind of for him, it was mostly photos. 
it's about einbilden, and it's it's a question that uh, you're operating a machine, and the machine is is kind of uh, capturing you something. Okay, you begin to see that this has some uh, uh, relation to to what uh, has been discussed about uh, uh, kind of uh, different types of data capturing methods and and images uh, drawing in archaeology. And uh, he's also developing a, a certain kind of a conceptual apparatus. Uh, uh, how to uh, how how the things are are kind of done when you are dealing with technical images, and uh, his idea is is that there is a, a kind of a, a tool with the technical images. It could be a, a kind of a, a camera, but it could be of course something else. It could be a total station, a station, or a laser scanner, or whatever. And uh, it's kind of the the, the tool that uh, creates the meaning for technical images. And then the human being who does the capturing or is the kind of the documenting uh, person, so uh, he or she is in the role of a functionary. Uh, and what is kind of really uh, crucial here is, is a program, and it's kind of it's embedded in, in the apparatus, in, in the machine that is being operated. And then uh, kind of a, a, an outcome of this for workflow is the technical image. And uh, to put it in, in very simple terms, so you can probably kind of say that the traditional images, so they are kind of their reflection, of their interpretations, uh, whereas the, uh, the technical images, so it's, it's a question about uh, kind of captured data. And uh, even if I'm not kind of really sure whether I agree with everything uh, Flusser uh, writes, uh, I think he makes some uh, interesting remarks. And uh, what he what he writes is that uh, kind of that the apparatus needs to be uh, they, they would be they really need to needed to be controlled by human beings otherwise uh, something really bad can happen and the apparatus will kind of continue uh, running its program uh, even uh, after the intended result kind of intended by by the human being who is operating the apparatus has been achieved and then something unintended is probably going to be happening. And uh, then, uh, uh, because it's it's kind of uh, it's it's really that technical image. It's it's the machine that makes the technical image, and then uh, there is uh, it's a sort of kind of uh, collaboration between the operator and the machine. But it's all, also a question that the the person who's operating the machine should be kind of somehow um, fighting against the machine in in a sense that the machine doesn't take it over. And uh, if we kind of let it go and let the machine decide what's, what's going to happen, so his idea is that uh, th we're going to get technical images that are phantoms that can give uh, the world and us the meaning. So it's, it's really the camera or the laser scanner that's, uh, that's kind of really defining what the meaning is, and it's not anymore the human operator. This sounds a little bit uh, familiar if you think about uh, this. Uh, dystopian ideas of what's going to happen when we just kind of capture things and, and we don't be critical to the technology and stuff like that, even even in, in, uh, in archaeology. And a uh, uh, final outcome of the whole, uh, according to Flusher, is, is that we, uh, or, or the machine, is, is going to give us some kind of a self-produced dream, a kind of a fable, that it's, it's, it's not real, but it's kind of a composed thing by, by the machine. And, uh, okay, thinking a little bit back to the archaeological data and not just taking this as a kind of a stereotypical critique of, uh, of, of kind of uh, archaeological images or uh, capturing stuff. So, um, what, can be, uh, what can be said? And, and one possibility, um, what I, I came to think about, is that we have this kind of an idea that, uh, that we capture data and then we, uh, the data isn't enough but what we need is that we kind of put things on top of the data to make it meaningful. And that's kind of a, we capture something, then we interpret it, and it maybe becomes information. And when we synthesize things together from many different uh, surveys and excavations, so then we know something about the past, and that's kind of the, uh, the somehow the goal of, of uh, archaeology. Okay, then it goes further to, uh, well, identity construction, understanding what we are as human beings and so on. But it's, it's kind of a thing that uh, we put uh, stuff on top of each other. And uh, that's fair enough. 
I don't kind of really buy the I, this is very close to the idea of the uh, data information knowledge system pyramid that's very um, trendy in, in knowledge management still after a few decades. Uh, it can be criticized, but, but this is very close to, to that kind of an idea. And uh, thinking about what, what kind of Russo writes about the technical images and what the uh, machine can do to us. So in some sense, uh, maybe sometimes uh, the, the question could be also that we have to take something out of the data, uh, out of the, the, the things that we consider uh, info as information and as informing us about about the past, about uh, archaeological stuff that was uh, being done in the past. And uh, we, uh, we need to kind of take out of some paradata. <laughs> we need, need to take out some metadata and, and some, some kind of uh, um, uh, understanding interpretations that are kind of built in, in the data, that are, uh, are kind of there and what the data suggests us, that what kind of conclusions we should be drawing. So kind of uh, try to remove something of it and maybe replace it with something else. And uh, okay, kind of following this very dystopian idea of a flusser, so, so we, we kind of take all the crap that the machines that we're operating, they are kind of putting in, in the data, uh, but uh, uh, and then we should be putting their kind of this good human stuff instead. Okay, this is not, <laughs> it's not really that simple. And, and it's not really kind of that black and white, but, but still kind of this kind of an idea that we might actually need to take something out and put something else instead uh, to make the data reflect something that's uh, meaningful from the perspective of archaeology and from the perspective of, of individual archaeologists. And uh, then I guess it's uh, high time for me to uh, shut up and uh, let you others to, to say something if there is time. Thank you.